Okay, where did you, where did we leave off? Shall we continue? Okay, I was talking about community building, and we just saw a perfect example of community building, that collaborative effort of our community members are getting the sound back going. That was awesome. That's what part of community building is all about. Whatever it takes, working together as a community to get things done, that's going to benefit the community. Networking. I'm a network weaver. I like networking with people. I like chatting with people. I like sharing information. Quite often, I, I will find, try to find out what a group is doing so I can share the information when I do send my social media broadcast out. And I'm not sure if you caught it before, but if you see this illustration here on this slide, this is my, this is my professional network. There's a program called NMAPS. You can link to, to it through your LinkedIn.com. The green there, that's you. That is my virtual base networks that I am connected to through LinkedIn.com. Networking, I, I cannot say enough of networking. Networking allows you to foster partnerships. It allows you to link public health services. It allows you to share capacity building resources. My my whole program of capacity buildings came out of my real to virtual, virtual to real. It's my feeling, my vision that whatever goes on in the real world can be brought into a virtual setting, may it be a 3D or a 2D. Uh, nonprofit social service providers are the people who I target my share project to, but this can benefit any other industry organization. Only your imagination stops you from doing what you need to do. In real life, and this is why I try to compare, in real life you have your meetings, you have your counseling sessions, you have your conferencing, your training, your networking. You can just simply carry it into the virtual setting. One thing when you carry it into the virtual setting, you have expanded your, 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 your reach. You're reaching a whole lot more people than you can right in a room. I had a colleague who told me she has an individual who drives three hours for a one-hour meeting. So this is the perfect example, a perfect use of virtual worlds. She could just come on board and do her meeting right from her computer. Meetings, counseling, networking, same thing goes on in the real life, goes on in the virtual world, as many of you know. Training is ideal, and that goes without saying, with all the educators that are using it, I applaud you. And it's just I plan to embrace it to continue doing laboratory training because quite often when you work with medical personnel, they cannot return to your training site to do training so we can do field training using the virtual world. Capacity building, that's what it's all about. Capacity building using the virtual worlds. Whatever it takes to help that nonprofit to enhance or to reach their mission, that's what the capacity building, my definition of capacity building is. Virtual world social media is an ideal platform to help them reach their missions. We do have some issues when we talk about the virtual worlds. Usability, I believe, is the main issue. It's the challenge, but it's also the focus. And that's one of the parts of the capacity building that Share Project extends making sure that these non, the nonprofits and the organizations has the systems that um, is needed to, for systems requirements, the technology. And a lot of times it's a matter of upgrading. Sometimes it's a matter of bringing the whole system into their um, program. And quite often when you bring those systems to the program, it expands other services that they can provide to the community. User training workshops. I have a um, real to virtual, virtual real ongoing workshop series here in Baltimore and hopefully be able to carry it other places where we do hands-on training. Going back to that 2009 Skills Building Institute that AIDS.gov, POS Magazine, and the National Association of People Living with AIDS conducted, that's what got me interested, hands-on helped me. That's what I gear my workshops to be hands-on, that basic boot camp type training. So when the individuals or organizations leave that workshop, they're ready to go and only would need some mentoring or coaching once they got back to your facility. And because too often, organizations don't have the time to do, go through a whole lot of training, workshop, what have you, but would like to do some real hands-on um, training so they can understand what's going on so they can get the things working. 
beyond it's this, this whole workshop was called sash presentation called beyond the beyond is based the beyond the second life i started the share project in second life but we want to expand so we can it beyond second life so we can't do the open sims and the first uh, location we had our share project was in Jakarta grid and Jakarta grid is an awesome pro awesome grid and um like i was saying before I had a care to introduce a local nonprofit who has an AIDS awareness youth program into Jakarta Grid, and this is where they set their program up because of its um, family friendly and youth friendly. It's also budget friendly and a great community support there. But when I went to expand even great into another arena, this is when I my vision was to set up the awareness an awareness village, and this is where. The share village came into place, and this was has been started in <clears throat> I'm sorry in Kitely. Why in Kitely? Because I can add and have unlimited number of virtual worlds there, and the whole idea is to set up a complex where I can have other areas for the individuals or social um, service providers can go to and can meet if they want to lead the um, share project share village. Excuse me. One of those things we have like a business, we have a business world, we have a, a pa, uh, retreat area as well. But the Share Village in Kitely, which is sponsored by Share Pro, um, Consulting Network, provides space for aid service providers, organizations, awareness campaigns, and programs. And it also is linked into having retreats and conferencing, which is an ideal set up. We can also have it as an open and could have it as a private setup if we need to have a private setup. And these, this is just showing some of the collaborative efforts of some of the collaborative components of Sherv Village. Because we work with nonprofits, setting up a partnership, the picture you have, we have here at the top, and I'm not for sure if I do this little pointer, but the pictures we have here at the top where you see the row of houses, that is a nonprofit role. Nonprofits uh, will be invited to set up an office right there on that in that particular community, where they can get their information out about their organization. So that, therefore, their organization is not just located in their local community, but it's located in their worldwide virtual community. The tall white colored building, that's our wellness center. Within our wellness center, we're going to have a spa, but we also have a, um, our campaigns, a lot of the campaigns, and you see the picture to your lower, lower right, I guess your lower left, my lower right, is our room that is showing one of the um, campaigns that Centers of Disease Control has put out, which has been very, very helpful. It's one of our favorite campaigns. It's about um, working together to stop AIDS, to stop HIV. And that's the thing, sharing those campaigns in this environment. And we were mentioning Pinterest earlier. And then one of the things of Pinterest, I use Pinterest to link my various social media um, um, projects or works. The first one you hear, it's our, H, our H, um, share project, our HIV-related Pinterest pages. As we were talking before, you want to use images that are not copyrighted. If you're going to use a copyrighted image, you need to contact the owner of that copyright to get their permission. That's just the way I operate. I like to use of government campaigns or such as the CDC campaigns or it would be for HHS campaigns. A lot of their pro, um, images are public domain. You, with some are covered, with a lot of them are public domain. But regardless of which ones you're using, you want to make sure those images are connected to the or the source. You don't want to use, um, so for instance, a share project image, and you can connect it to JackJim.com. It doesn't work. It's all about co that collaborative interaction using these social media and the virtual world in a collaborative, responsible fashion. The second board here, and this is what we refer to as our Pinterest board, 
it has these pins on these pins are all related to open sims activities another thing about co co that community building whatever things are going on in open sims we try to put it up up on the boards in the on, on our uh, pinterest page and it's all about connecting using the virtual worlds to connect there's a lot of nonprofits who are doing a lot of things but they just don't have the time to meet physically or they're not um look situated in the same country state or whatever to even meet physically so we i re really see myself using the virtual worlds to connect these people what you see here is our meet up and we usually have a meet up in kite league where we get to meet the various community members also get to get ideas and share information we have our part where we show our role our um a's awareness videos and one thing about the virtual worlds you, you can scream in your youtube videos which works very nicely one of the biggest challenges in addition to the technical challenges which always gets resolved one of the biggest challenges is educating potential users that virtual worlds integration is not a game recently i had a colleague to talk to tell me oh yeah you're doing that 3d stuff i play that game all the time no this is not a game it's not a game to disable individuals it's not a game to deploy military personnel it's not a game to researchers it's not a game to so many people in the industry and because it's not a game that's why i'm very passionate about getting introducing virtual worlds to nonprofits who are trying to do something about HIV AIDS um, in the United States as well as worldwide. The um, United States, that our na the national HIV AIDS strategy for the United States is to reduce the number of new HIV infections, increase access to health care, and to reduce HIV related health disparities. Now, it's at a point now that we have to start thinking out of the box. I cannot see a better way to think out of the box but to think out the box virtually. That's why virtual worlds will always be a key part of my HIV AIDS awareness promotion and um and and, and training programs. Some time ago, um Jeff Crawley from the White House Office of Policy said that we're gonna have to really start thinking out of the box, it's not business as usual. Definitely virtual worlds make it not business as usual. So like I was saying before, healthcare or any other social component or social where you're reaching out to the community virtual worlds and social media is key because it's a channel of communication you want to get that information out there one another big 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 challenge has been funding because and I think it's because a lot of people do not understand I'm sure a lot of you have this same experience because a lot of people do not understand and instead of some of those people are funders do not understand what or how the virtual worlds can benefit a program too often the funding is not there from for some awesome initiatives so hopefully by educating the general public and this is one reason I constantly put things up on my Facebook business page to keep it in front keep it out there I've been broadcasting this conference throughout the week throughout the past couple months letting people understand that this is a valuable tool this is a seamless tool so hopefully the funding will come for programs that's out there that's helping the community this share project is a self-funded capacity building training program and we're always looking for funding because it gets really challenging gets very challenging but the passion to use virtual worlds um just keeps keeps the program going it might sound a little um pollyanna but um the passion is just too great not to pursue the particular um of, of the particular channel of communication and that's what it is it's a channel communication that is too that is excellent for capacity building for awareness and for training and as you'll see on the slide here, I've, I've left my put up my uh, contact information and the links to some of my pages. I'm a big tweeter. Tweet me, share the information. Um, I love feedback. If you're in Kitely or you when you are uh, in the rain in the area, drop in the share pro village. Or uh, you can also visit our fa our Facebook um, business page, which is Share Project. 
And then that, I think we'll gain that. That concludes my presentation, and I'm open for any questions. Sometimes it takes them a minute to formate those questions, Sally. Okay. We'll just wait a few minutes. <laughs> I was wondering why was was I still there? Yeah. <laughs> You're still here. We'll wait a minute or so. It takes a while to formulate those questions. Audience, do you have any questions for Sally? There's one now. Have you seen a lot of traffic at Kitely? The traffic is starting to pick up. I've been in Kitely I was, look, for the past, what, since 2012, I believe it is. The traffic is starting to pick up. And I, was, um, I think yesterday, the minute you heard, um, Ian was talking about the marketplace. They've just opened up. Um, that should, I'm looking forward to that generating even more traffic. As a matter of fact, we're using, um, we have a store there because we use it as a fundraiser for our program. So um, the question came up yesterday, you know, why, how um, the residents, and I'm one of those residents, see that as a um, benefit of being a resident in Kitely, like I said, it is serving as a fundraiser to help defer some of our costs. Any other questions? I don't see anybody typing, so I'm going to take that as a no. What I want to do with this time, then, is uh, thank I'll, Sally for, go ahead. for. Now I would like to ask if any of you are using social media for your programs, what I would like for you to, especially for your Twitter, if you put your Twitter uh, ID, and if you just type your Twitter ID in your chat, those who are online, appreciate it. Or look me up on Twitter, Facebook, and come to and our fa and our website. I'm done. Okay, we'll have a little few more questions after we go off air. In the meantime, I want to thank you for what a wonderful and informative presentation uh, that you gave, and thank our audience for the questions. And when you do get up, be careful. Uh, don't all leave at once. And. Uh, Please, if you will, uh, turn to uh, your website web page at uh, http colon slash slash conference dot open simulator dot com or dot org uh, 2013 to uh, continue looking at the uh, information the schedule. Uh, have a great day at the conference. Thank you for your time. So are you taking me to lunch now? <laughs> <laughs>